Campus Party. Esta es de las últimas ya actividades de este año. Y en verdad creo que estamos todos emocionados por escuchar a la siguiente personalidad. Sé que tiene muchas aventuras que contarnos. Es un tipazo, es divertido. Pregúntenle muchas cosas de cómo fue la creación de todo esto. A continuación, Mighty Eagle, CMO de Robio, más conocido con Angry Birds. Un aplauso, por favor. Hey, thank you. Yeah, hello. So, uh, I guess he just said that I'm Pierre, I'm the Mighty Eagle from uh, Robio, and uh, better known for Angry Birds. So, uh, yeah, it's really great to be here. Uh, We've been here in uh, Mexico now since Monday and uh, we kind of like last minute managed to set up this uh, uh, presentation as well. So, uh, yeah, really good to be here because uh, uh, we have uh, so many fans here in Mexico. So it's about time to be here to, you know, thank you all for uh, playing the game and, uh, and you know, uh, enjoying our other Angry Birds uh, experiences. So uh, really, really great to be here. Uh, so what I thought uh, I'd do today is, is uh, talk a little bit about the Angry Bird story uh, so far. So uh, this is now, uh, we're in our fourth year of Angry Birds. Uh, and uh, a little bit about how we got here, uh, you know, what we achieved so far, and uh, maybe also a little bit about uh, what we plan to do going forward. Uh, One reason, uh, you know, another, one more reason besides, you know, uh, uh, loving being here in Mexico, uh, one reason I love being here at the campus party uh, in particular and, you know, looking around is that Rovio as a company got started in a very similar environment almost exactly 10 years ago. Actually, 10 years and three days ago, uh, Niklas and two of his friends, uh, they were students at the Aalto University in Helsinki, Finland. They took part in a game-making competition that I organized. I was working at HP at the time, so this was uh, back in 2003, as I said, 10 years, three days ago, so, uh, you know, a bit uh, historic there. So they took part in a game-making competition at an event called Assembly. And you can Google that, Assembly Helsinki. That's where the Finnish gaming industry got started. It has been running for 20 years. It's very similar to this. It's about 4,000 to 6,000 people getting together every year in August. And Niklas and his two friends came there participating in this competition. They created a game called King of the Cabbage World. They won the competition. After the competition, They came to me and said that, okay, now what? And I said, okay, hey, you guys clearly love not only playing games, but making games. And I'm a big believer in, uh, you know, that you should always, always, no matter what you do, you should do what you love. If you're not, you know, loving what you do, go do something else. And, you know, being here, if you don't love what you do, start a company, do your own thing best thing you can do. So that's the advice I gave to Niklas and his two friends. Go start a company, make games. It's easy. Okay, it turned out that it wasn't that easy because uh, Rovio now, as I said, been making games for 10 years. Uh, 51 games, 52nd game, Angry Birds. So it's not like an overnight success story. It actually took quite some time, quite some games, and then Angry Birds. But I think there is, uh, you know, a lesson in there as well, that when you are an entrepreneur, when you're in a startup, you have to be a bit crazy. You know, we all are, in a good way, I hope. Uh, but you also have to believe, you know, you have to believe that in the end, you know, you will be successful. And uh, actually, who here will create the next Angry Birds? And all of you who are doing startups, your hands should be up like this, because there's no reason why you can't. I mean, think about Niklas and his two friends, Helsinki, Finland, cold, dark, in the middle of nowhere, you know, uh, created Angry Birds. So if they can do that, you can do that. I mean, there's like five times more people in Mexico City alone 
than in all of Finland. You know, five million people, a few more here. So why wouldn't you guys create the next Angry Birds? No reason. And even if you don't, you have to believe that you will. You have to. And uh, the thing is that uh, that's what startups, that's what entrepreneurship is all about. You have to be crazy, ambitious like that. Very important. Very important. Have to believe. And then, you know, look at us. We made it happen. And we're like from Helsinki, which is like far, far away from a lot of places. And it's a tiny place. So, you know, you can. But anyway, so then uh, in, uh, if we then fast forward to like 2009, 11th of uh, December 2009, we launched Angry Birds. Uh, the development took eight months. It actually started with Jaakko Isalo or Jasko. Uh, he actually pitched this game idea to the company, 12 people at the time. Now we're 700, so we've grown a bit in the last three years. He pitched this game idea uh, to the company. We have these internal pitching sessions. Uh, nobody really understood the game idea, but in his pitch, he had these amazing characters, these birds. And everybody said that, hey, we have to make a game around those birds. We have to. And that's what then happened over the next eight months. Made a game around the birds that became Angry Birds. And uh, I think that this is also something that's interesting. It's a character-based business story. So uh, that's something that, again, there are lots of very successful character-based businesses. You know, uh, one very big one that got started in 1928, uh, Steamboat Willie, black and white cartoon by this guy called Walt Disney, launched Mickey Mouse to the world. And Mickey Mouse is still here, the company, Disney, everywhere. They're still slightly bigger than us, but we're working on it. Uh, but anyway, it's a great example of taking, you know, simple character, black and white cartoon in their case, uh, unleashing that to the world, and all of a sudden, making movies, building parks, selling toys, and what have you. So there are other people that have done what we have done before, much before us. But uh, again, the difference with Angry Birds is that we are the first one to start digital and going to physical. All the other guys have started physical, you know, uh, they started there and then they built parks and toys and then now they're desperately trying to get digital and build games. You know, some of them successful, some of them not so much. But anyway, so there are examples of other businesses, big businesses like Disney that started with one character and then expanded everywhere. Another example, Hello Kitty. This little cat character, Sanrio, Japan. I mean, Japan is like the superpower. It's the Hollywood of character business. If you ever go to Japan, if you've been to Japan, characters everywhere. Hello Kitty, Pokemon, Mario, you name it. So again, other people have done what we have done other ways, built businesses around characters. But we did this starting with digital, starting with games. Nobody else has done that. But Hello Kitty has been around since 1974, and uh, again, still going strong. Uh, Mario, 30 years, almost 30 years of fantastic games by Nintendo, and a bunch of other stuff. Uh, our friends at Lucas, they launched uh, Star Wars in 1977, still going strong. So, you know, I get asked that, oh yeah, guys, you did Angry Birds, but what are you going to do next? We're going to do more Angry Birds, a lot more Angry Birds. So we're only getting started. We're not building this for 100 days. We're building Angry Birds for 100 years. We have a 100-year plan. So uh, again, it's not that we are, you know, people, oh, but you're doing games and animation and you're, you know, doing toys and candy and what have you. And, you know, I have the Mighty Eagle shoes. You know, you know the thing is that 
yes, we are, but it's about providing Angry Birds experiences to all of you, to all of our fans in all forms and shapes. So, yeah, you could say that we are not focused, but actually we are razor sharp focused on Angry Birds, the brand, the franchise. And there are only two things that we care about, our fans, our brand. So our business is very, very simple. That's uh, the only thing that we need to worry about. Are we providing great branded Angry Birds experiences to our fans? So whenever we do a partnership, we do a new game, we do animation, anything, we look at it, is, is it a great experience for our fans? If not, we don't do it. And, and this is, again, uh, very, very simple. You know, and we also uh, have a very simple, you know, kind of like three-step process, how we manage our business. Get fans, keep fans, then monetize. Monetization is a distant third. But that said, we're running an insanely profitable business. So uh, we really believe that if you great, create great experiences for the fans, everything else will follow. But if you have a crap experience, good luck monetizing that. So uh, very, very important. But yeah, anyway, so uh, Angry Birds, we launched uh, 11th of December 2009. That's actually Angry Birds Day. We hope to make it a public holiday here in Mexico as well, but uh, I guess we need to talk to the government. 11th of December, so that's a big party here for sure. But uh, anyway, uh, uh, we launched the game. Then, uh, you know, in March uh, uh, this year, we announced that we've now hit... 1.7 billion downloads and that was in March so we added a few since then but haven't added uh, you know or made public any more numbers but it makes Angry Birds the most distributed piece of entertainment content ever bigger than music videos movies what have you so uh, it's pretty big uh, but yeah that's just the number of downloads uh, we actually uh, much more look at uh, or rather look at the engagement December last year we had 263 million people, you know, fans playing our games. 263 million. Okay, to put things in perspective, Twitter, you know, you might have heard about that. 200 million users. So we are bigger than all of Twitter. We did it in three years. It took Twitter six years to get to 200 million. So we have built the fastest growing consumer brand ever. Faster than Google, YouTube, Skype, Facebook, you name it. Growing much faster than anybody ever before. And now I'm talking about the brand, not the company. The fastest growing brand ever. So, as I say always, it's a good start. But we're only getting started. There will be more games. 19th of September this year, Angry Birds Star Wars 2. Okay, when we announced Angry Birds Star Wars 2, we also mentioned that we have over 100 million downloads for Angry Birds Star Wars, which we announced in November last year. So, good numbers. And towards the end of the year, Angry Birds Go, our first totally different gameplay Angry Birds title. First 3D Angry Birds title, first Angry Birds title that doesn't give you the traditional slingshotting birds at pig action. It's totally different. So uh, very excited about that. Probably the two best games that we've ever done. So we are making more games. Okay, in March this year, we launched Angry Birds Toons. We launched our own Angry Birds animated series. Uh, so uh, two years ago, we bought an animation studio. And now we're running the biggest animation studio in Northern Europe. Every week, new animated episode, two minutes, 45 seconds. Okay, we did some broadcast deals. We have about 30 countries where it's on TV. But okay, most of you probably don't even watch TV. I mean, I look at my kids and, uh, you know, they consume all the content on the tablets, on the phones. So we want to be on the first screen. Uh, the TV is, you know, the second or third, but it's like not that important. So we launched... Angry Birds Toons as a channel in all our games. In March, we flipped a switch and overnight 1.7 billion games got updated and we added Angry Birds Toons, the channel. First 12 weeks, 
of Angry Birds tunes, we got 400 million views. So overnight, we created one of the biggest video distribution networks on the planet in our games. So you know how they do the movie promotion in Hollywood that only in theaters. So when you look at Angry Birds tunes, only on Angry Birds, the biggest distribution network out there. So uh, what is very interesting now when we talk to uh, the guys in Hollywood, you know, like two years, three years ago when we talked to the guys in Hollywood, they were always telling us that, hey, we should talk, we can help you with distribution. Now, when we have those dis discussions, I tend to mention to them that, hey, guys, if you need help with distribution, let me know. So things change. And uh, I think this is something that's very interesting. So again, coming back to this, that, hey, who will create the next Angry Birds in here? There's no reason why you couldn't. And the same thing, who here will create, you know, the next YouTube, the next big video distribution network? It can be done. And if we can do it in Helsinki, you can do it in Mexico. You can do it in Mexico City or anywhere here. No reason why not. And one interesting thing, I always get asked that, okay, you know, Rovio's, okay, how many people are you? And say, okay, yeah, we're 700, and okay, we're in Helsinki, and we have offices in Shanghai, and, you know, uh, we have a small studio in Stockholm, we have people in Tokyo, in Seoul, and okay, we have a handful of people in Santa Monica. And then they ask me that, oh, uh, uh, but um, how many people do you have in the Silicon Valley? And I say, like, uh, nobody, none, zero. And it's like, what? I mean, you're Rovio, you're Angry Birds, you're very successful. It, it's impossible. You, you don't have anybody in Silicon Valley. And, you know, this is like, again, uh, very interesting that you don't have to be any particular place. You don't have to be in Silicon Valley. You don't have to be in Helsinki. You don't have to be in Mexico City. But you can create massive businesses in any of those places. So I think this is, again, something that is very important. I met actually with... Uh, startup here from Mexico uh, a couple of days ago, and they're telling me that they moved to San Francisco and blah, 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 and I say, okay, why? Oh, because you're supposed to do so. And I say, okay, so how has it been for you? Impossible to find talent, very expensive, uh, thousands of startups competing for the funding, pretty miserable. But yeah, we learned a lot. So I really encourage all of you to come, like when you do your startup, you know, you can do it here, you can be very successful here, of course, you can also move to Helsinki or the Valley, you know, but, you know, do what's right for you. And we are kind of like a living example that you don't have to be in the Valley. I mean, I go there all the time. Every, every time I go there, of course, I learn stuff like just uh, like here I've learned. I actually learned a lot more this week here than I learned in a week in the Valley. But anyway, so, uh, you know, uh, just, you know, a point that I wanted to make. So then, uh, uh, yeah, we've expanded into animation. We also do consumer products. We now have tens of thousands of Angry Birds branded products out there with about 600 partners. 45% uh, of our business last year, consumer products. Good timing, Igor. So yeah, we also sold uh, a lot of uh, Angry Birds uh, footballs because I understood that football is like a big deal here in Mexico. And I heard that there's some like football thing next year. Hopefully you guys make it. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we'll see. But uh, Igor, actually, who's my colleague at Rovio, he's from Brazil, and he told me that, uh, uh, that they have, like, a good chance of winning something there. I don't know. But, you know, like, I think that it would be good for you guys to win something for a change. So, you know, like, actually, you, you won at the Olympics, didn't you? Yeah, congratulations. So, you know, it can be done. And I think you beat those guys. So, you know, very good. But, yeah, so we also make physical products. We sold a lot of these here in Brazil. We're working with Void, so they are uh, experts in making balls. So, uh, you know, again, uh, when you have a strong brand, you can do a lot of interesting things like footballs. And, uh, of course, uh, my son plays football, so I'm not, like, totally ignorant. I'm not American, even though the accent might sound like that, but I'm actually from, from Finland, and we play football. Not very well, but at least we managed to tie Spain once, so that was okay. Uh, so that's probably the biggest achievement for us. Uh, we're an ice hockey country, so, you know, cold and dark and ice, so ice hockey. And Angry Birds, of course. 
That was another, by the way, interesting thing. I shouldn't say that, but I read actually a stat this week. We're looking at the market opportunity for footballs, and there are 250 million people on the planet that play football or soccer, if you're American. So uh, almost as big as Angry Birds. It's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, anyway, uh, I probably shouldn't go there, but you know, I did. Uh, anyway, so um, another thing, uh, thing, so okay, games, animation, consumer products, massive scale. We're also making books and learning solutions. So we've decided to give the world education. So again, being from Finland, uh, we have some pretty good schools. And I think that's one reason why we've been able to create things like Angry Birds. Okay, we used to have Nokia. Okay, they're still around, but you know, like there, some struggle. Uh, let's hope that they get, get themselves sorted. Uh, we also created Linux. We created MySQL. Uh, Jarkko Oikarin, one of my friends, created the IRC, which is the basis for all the like, messaging and chat. So, for a country with 5 million people, we've done a lot. But uh, I think that we have to thank our educational system, because it's really, really great. So, what we decided to do at Rovia, we teamed up with the Finnish Board of Education, and NASA, and CERN, and National Geographic. And we decided, okay, let's give the world education. Let's make learning fun. And what I mean about making learning fun, uh, boys in Finland speak better English than girls. Why? Because they play more games. The games are in English. So they are learning English while they're having fun. So we looked at this and, you know, like, hey, we can do the same for math and physics and like any, uh, any topic. So we decided, okay, let's team up with some of the best people on the planet and do just that. So at Rovio, yes, we are an entertainment company. We actually look at ourselves as being an entertainment, education, and entrepreneurship company, a triple E company. So we've decided to invest heavily in books and learning, and we will give the world education. Hopefully, we'll be able to bring it here. We're definitely going to bring it to the US. They need it, and China. They also need it. So uh, that's one other area that we are uh, active in. And uh, then uh, we also started expanding the, yeah, and it's getting a bit hot in here, so I kind of like uh, do this. So, uh, uh, branding, anyway. So uh, we also have bad piggies. And, uh, you know, I thought I'd bring that up because it's the free app of the week. So if you don't have bad piggies on your iPhone or iPad, I encourage you to download it for free right now because uh, it's not free for many days. It's one of the best games that we've done. Amazing engagement. Those of you who played it, it's great and it's funny. So, uh, you know, bad piggies, download it now. Little commercial, but thought that would be okay. So we do other things than just like core Angry Birds. So uh, maybe not totally a one-hit wonder. And we made a few Angry Birds games, obviously. Um, yes, so... Um, uh, as we are in the business of uh, interactive entertainment, I mean, you probably by now uh, know that I could go on and on and on about Angry Birds for hours and hours. I will not do that, but I'm more than happy to take questions to make this a bit more interactive. You get a lot, lot more out of this if you get engaged. So uh, any questions, comments, anybody here? Do we have mics or... Uh, or not? Okay, yeah, I'll just like listen here. I would like to know why, what was your first budget to get... Make items. Items. Yeah. Okay. Oh, For promotion. Uh, yes. Okay. Perfect. Okay, so the question was about what was our first budget uh, for promotion. But actually, I expanded that. So to make the original Angry Birds, cost, uh, it took eight months and cost about 100K dollars. Not a lot. Uh, but that was all the money we had. When we launched the game, we had zero for advertising. We have used no money for advertising, customer acquisition, none of that. So for us, marketing is a profit center. When we market our game, we make money. So uh, uh, we really don't spend any money on advertising. And I think this is also very important that when you build your games, what I always tell people that if you are serious about making games, and I see people here who are very serious about games, making games, but you also have to be very serious about marketing. Because for every Angry Birds 
there are tens of thousands of not so angry birds, not so successful games. Great games, but nobody knows about them because the developers didn't tell the world about the games. They didn't market them properly. They didn't brand them properly. So if you are serious about making games, and this is actually not only games, if you're serious about making anything, you have to be serious about marketing. And, you know, I wouldn't say anything else because I'm a marketing guy, obviously. So, uh, but you know, it's true. It's very, very true that if nobody knows about the great game, the great service that you made, they will not download it. You know, and then, you know, not so good. So uh, really think about that. And Angry Birds, actually, the brand itself is built for word of mouth marketing for viral distribution. Because when you hear Angry Birds, first thing, why are the birds angry? Of course, it's because the pigs stole their eggs and you get really angry if somebody steals your eggs. So we immediately get you into the story, the question, it's in your head. And once we're there, or once we get there, we won. You will remember the brand forever. And then, you know, the red color and all of that, you know, helps. So you stand out. So you have to differentiate. That's another very important uh, kind of like uh, rule of marketing that uh, every market so crowded, especially when it comes to games. Uh, even if you make great games, you know, if nobody sees it, uh, you know, you're not like doing too well. So you really need to think about how do you stand out from the crowd? Why are you different? Red color works great for us, but you know, like uh, again, uh, think about how you stand out. First rule of marketing, as far as I'm concerned. Okay, more questions. Uh, I have two questions. The first one is... Oh. Okay, great. Okay. Well, I have two questions. Uh, the first one is, how did you manage to go on for 52 games before Angry Bird, uh, like having games that you don't, yeah. you know, don't sell enough and you feel like tired, how did you do that? And second uh, question, how would you get as a developer from here, from Mexico, to be part of the Robio Stars program? Uh, yeah. You have like a yeah. publishing stuff, right? Yeah. So, uh, I mean, uh, the answer on like how you can like survive for uh, a long time uh, before you hit Angry Birds. Okay, we did work for hire. We did lots of games for Nokia, EA. We did Need for Speed. Uh, we did uh, Burnout Mobile. We did uh, the Bound series of games for Nokia. They paid some, paid us some money, put food on the table. But you know, work for hire. If you don't have to, don't do it. So uh, you know, like uh, it's again uh, not fun. But uh, then, so that's like how you get by. And you know, how much food do you really need? You know. But uh, anyway, uh, so that, that's kind of like uh, the thing there that, you know, you'll find a way to survive and you have to believe and, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's not easy. But again, uh, it's not easy to do great things. I think that's also this uh, thing that uh, a lot of people now think that, oh, I'll create a game, I'll put it in the App Store and I'll get rich and, you know, be happy. But it's actually a lot of hard work and sometimes it takes six years, 51 games. It's not, you know that easy so uh, I think that's something that should always keep in mind uh, the second part of the question was how do you get in touch with us and get part of the Rovio stars publishing program okay you can send me an email on peter at rovio.com or send me a message on Twitter you know that's uh, and I'll connect you with the guys who do Rovio stars uh, we are doing a very limited uh, you know, kind of like publishing program because not big believers in like publishing, but we uh, wanted to work with, you know, four or five games a year. Uh, we really look at, you know, how we can work closely together and get some of these great games out there that wouldn't otherwise get noticed. So we've now done uh, Icebreaker and Tiny Thief, uh, been pretty successful. Uh, I'm sure we're going to announce some numbers pretty soon. But uh, again, uh, yeah, get in touch and, uh, and then we'll see what we can do. We'd love to publish a great game from Mexico. But uh, I was talking to uh, one of the game developers here last night and I said that, hey, make it Mexican. It's okay. I mean, people outside of Mexico love Mexican stuff, Mexican food. People have heard about it. They had it. They know. So, you know, it's, it's okay to make it look very, very Mexican. People here might not like it because it's not from the US or whatever but you know like 
outside of Mexico it's okay. So, you know, no problem. So, a cool Mexican game, I would love to publish something like that. More questions? How, did you, how do you think Angry Birds became a, a game so downloaded, even more downloaded than many other games that are really more elaborated than Angry Birds, which is a very simple idea and a very simple topic? Mm -hmm. How do you think? Okay, so, so the question I guess was that how did a game like Angry Birds that is so simple and not as complex and difficult as a lot of other games get more downloaded. And I would say that Angry Birds got more downloaded than any other game because it's very approachable, very simple, very easy to understand, not difficult, not complex, uh, very easy, very approachable. So exactly for that reason. And then, you know, because of the characters. People love the characters. I don't know why. I mean, it's very difficult to say. Why do people love Hello Kitty or Mickey Mouse? Difficult to say, but I mean, it's a fact. People love Angry Birds and the bad piggies. So uh, characters, approachability, and then I think also, uh, you know, when you ask the marketing guy. So of course we did a few things right on the marketing side. So uh, very, very uh, much about the brand and doing things differently. Example: when we launched Angry Birds Space, we launched it in space with NASA on the International Space Station. And people thought we're crazy. And as I said before, we are, so they were right. But it's crazy in a good way. That of course, if you do a game about space, you go talk to NASA and you launch it with Don Pettit, one of the astronauts in space. So different marketing, but we make sure that everybody on the planet knows that there's a new Angry Birds game out there. So. Uh, I think that uh, uh, also your question about like the simplicity and all of that. Every day I get, uh, I talk to somebody who comes up to me and says that I never play games, but I play Angry Birds. So when you look at that, people who play Angry Birds, they are not, they don't consider themselves to be gamers. They're normal people but they play Angry Birds. They never play games, but they play Angry Birds. Of course, Angry Birds is a game, but still they don't like see it that way. And I think that uh, what we see now with the explosion in smartphones, in tablets, smart connected touch devices, that now gaming is okay. It's mainstream, much, much more mainstream and accepted than any time before in history. Consoles and all of that, never really mainstream, not really, more of a niche. And I think that what we're seeing now with uh, phones and tablets is that that's where all the entertainment consumption is going. Video, games, music, everything. And a lot of these other uh, things are really becoming niche. TV, consoles, newspapers, CDs, you know, all of that stuff. So. Uh, we're pretty happy with being one of the big brands on the first screen. And I think that there will be many, many, many more brands that get started on the first screen. And then they become, you know, the next Angry Birds, the next Mickey Mouse, the next Hello Kitty. What we've done will become the norm, not the exception. Thanks. Anybody else? Hello. Uh, I would like to know what do you think about, well, back in 2009 when Angry Birds first came out in the App Store, in the App Store. So I think the App Store was on one of the key factors that for the su successful of Angry Birds. What do you think about the App Store in, back in 2009 and now where, when the App, yeah. App Store is more crowd of applications and video games and everybody's in, in there? Yeah, uh, let's say that, of course, uh, the App Store is slightly more crowded now, but it was already crowded when Angry Birds came out. Uh, so it wasn't like there was like one or two games. There were like uh, thousands or tens of thousands. I don't remember the exact number, but many, many, many games 
in the App Store when Angry Birds came out. So it wasn't like we were the only game. And, uh, and of course, if you fast forward now, there are even more games. It's even more crowded, yes. But I still think that uh, uh, you can make it happen even if you are like one or two guys in a garage or a bedroom or whatever uh, you know you can uh, create a great game and there are examples of that you know after Angry Birds there's been quite a few very successful games that have been made by a couple of guys no marketing budget but just like great games and they also done the branding and done some other things uh, besides you know spending money on marketing so, so I think that uh, it's very very doable still to build a great you know success without a lot of people without a lot of money of course it gets a bit more difficult but as i said you know it's not even supposed to be easy it's just like life that's how it goes hey over here yeah. okay yeah. hi um well, nowadays the the games industry and also the technologies are growing so fast and so big that uh, every day we get uh, more immersed into these uh, devices, uh, video games, etc. Do you agree with the idea that there will come a day when we are so trapped into these these technologies that these technologies will be the only way that we can perceive uh, the reality? Um, yeah, I, I think that it's, um, it's, it's impossible to predict the future. And, uh, and I think that, uh, of course, we should be a bit concerned about uh, getting too immersed in the fairly like, limited technology that we have nowadays with like, screens that you need to have in your face and, and all of that. So, uh, uh, okay, is there a danger that we forget how to interact with the world without this uh, maybe but I, I think that uh, there's always you know throughout history been concerned that uh, are people really made for travel in cars because cars go really fast and you know all of that so I think that is just uh, something that we'll uh, have to live with and uh, you know I think that technology will get better and uh, 10 years from now the current, you know, like iPhones and iPads and Androids and all of that will look pretty pathetic, you know. So uh, I think that there will be other ways of interacting with games, with services. So, uh, you know, I'm the kind of like eternal optimist. So I just think that, uh, you know, it will turn out uh, amazing. And I don't know exactly how that will happen, but uh, it will. It's just like human nature that we, we tend to do... Uh, the right thing in the end, but you know who knows. I don't. <laughs> so. Hi. There, yeah, back there. Hi. Uh, you say that uh, you care about your fans, and I'm a big fan. So I was wondering if I can keep your hoodie. If you can get your hoodie. Ah, uh, no. Uh. <laughs> Because I'm actually I'm heading to uh, Brazil from here and I need the hoodie. I, I can't be promoting just that big is like the rest of the trip. And I didn't bring enough like, uh, you know, uh, hoodies and T-shirts, two-week trip and all that. But yeah, uh, but send me a message, email peter at rovio.com or Twitter and we'll, we'll find something. Here. But hey, actually, um, yeah, so any more questions? Hi. Where? Uh, right here, in the back. There. Okay, cool. On your right? Here. There, I see you. Yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah. Well, we have this huge Angry Birds that has been developing with a series of games, Angry Birds, the original, the Space, Seasons, and Bad Piggies. Uh -huh. But you also have another, some other projects, like, for, for example, The Cruz, that was kind of a sponsored game. But you also have uh, another game that was another thing from aside from Angry Birds. So that was the surprising, the surprising thing. Uh, it was Amazing Alex yep. that you released uh, a couple of months ago. I don't know if it was years ago. Um, yeah, a year but, ago. Yeah. yeah, but it 
it didn't go that well as Sangy Birds, but still has the same uh, lovable characters. It, ha yeah. it has a fun gameplay. Yeah. What do you think that, for example, this game needs to be successful as Sangy Birds? Or what new games do you, what characteristics of new games do you think that is needed to grow yeah. as big as Sangy Birds? Right. Uh, yeah, so Amazing Alex, I uh, released about a year ago. Uh, Okay, we have less than 100 million downloads for it, but we have uh, a pretty good chunk uh, anyway. Uh, and actually what we are doing now with Amazing Alex, next thing that you'll see there, we haven't actually made a lot of uh, like notes about it, but I'll share it with you anyway. Uh, we are making a series of books, putting more depth into the, angry, uh, the Amazing Alex world. So... Uh, it's not like we stop developing that franchise, but it's not just about games. Sometimes, you know, it requires a uh, different approach. And uh, if you look at, you know, books, some people still read books. And uh, I was told that this uh, Harry Potter like thing started as a book and it's somewhat successful. So uh, with Amazing Alex, we're now making books and we'll see how it goes. And uh, I read the first books and they're great. So, uh, you know, I think that uh, you'll hear more about Amazing Alex also uh, going forward. But uh, then to your question about successful games. Uh, it, it's, uh, there's no kind of like simple answer to what makes a successful game. If you look at Angry Birds, it's a combination of many things. Brand, characters, optimized for touch devices, good timing stuff like that so uh, uh, if, if we and, and I think this is actually you know yes we have had some success with Angry Birds but we also made 51 games before so we know that it's damn difficult to make a hit game so uh, I think that we did the right thing when we decided that okay let's not get carried away with our own success and start believing our own bullshit that hey now we know how to make hit games you know Okay, we know a few things, but it's not like hit game, hit game, hit game. You know, it's again, uh, we decided that, okay, now we have a hit game. We have a big brand. We're building a big brand. Let's go all in with Angry Birds and not like do like a lot of musicians and movie makers that, oh, I made a hit. Now I know. And then you make the next one and it flops and you're like dead. So uh, I think that we, we don't underestimate the uh, challenge in making hits and neither should you. If you're making games, I mean, don't uh, have this kind of like illusion that, oh, I make a game and it's a hit. I mean, sometimes you get lucky, but that's the exception. I've heard about people winning the lottery as well, but how many people here won the lottery? Probably not too many. <laughs> and if you did, you wouldn't be here. So, uh, yeah, it's just like requires a bit of, uh, bit of work and it's not like perfect science or anything like that. But hey, I, I think that uh, I need to call a wrap up here because I need to go to the airport. And uh, even though it's Saturday, the traffic, you never know. So uh, I really want to thank you all. Uh, and as I said, uh, if you have anything, you can reach me on Twitter. I try to reply to kind of like every tweet. So uh, that's what we do at Rovio. But yeah, again, uh, Thank you all, and uh, please download Bad Piggies. It's free, so you should check it out if you haven't already done so. And 19th of September, Angry Birds Star Wars 2, amazing game, so you should also check that out. But yeah, great to be here. Thank you once again, and hopefully I'll be back soon. Thanks. Muchas gracias.